might be surprised to learn that this is all the code that's required to send a text message from inside an Android app out into the world. The part you see blurred out is my Google Voice number. That's where we're going to be sending our text message. And I, what I've done is I've created this message called text sent and I've attached a random number to it be, be, between 0 and 999 so that each time we test the app we get a unique message that's sent. I've had to surround the sending of the message with a try-catch block which is required here and just in case the app uh, is unable to send for some reason we're gonna be able to get an error message. So what I'm gonna do now since this is an app that cannot be tested on the emulator because emulators cannot text as of the time this video was being made I'm going to have to create an APK file by going over to build and saying build APK and then once that APK file is built I'm going to show you how I can use AirDroid to ship it to my phone. So I got a message here saying that the APK is all ready. Now I'm going to show that file here in uh, Windows Explorer. So I'm going to come over here and open up a new tab and go to web.airdroid.com and now all I need to do is take this app and drag it into this area of the screen and almost instantaneously the app will the file I should say will appear on my phone I'm going to install it there and run it and if everything goes well the message text sent should show up on my Google Voice console okay there's my Google console you can see there's nothing in there right now so I'm gonna run the app on my phone I'll be right back and now I'm just going to wait a few minutes for the text, hopefully, to show up. And there it is. Just be warned that text messages with Google Voice take a lot longer, several minutes typically, versus text messages on a regular cell phone. We're going to take this transmitter that we've built, and we're going to modify it slightly to be a little bit more generic, so that we can supply it with any phone number and any message, and it will send that message by text. To do that I'm going to insert a new parameter in here and then I'm going to change everything inside uh, to use information from inside that text message. Okay you can see that uh, Android Studio is complaining that text message class does not exist so we're going to be moving these text messages around in our app. It would be good to have a separate class that can hold an individual text message that we can manipulate. So let's go over here and click on this and when we get to the light bulb, let's create this class. And Android Studio has now created this class for us and we're going to start by creating some member variables. next thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a constructor. Studio's code generation capabilities to create two constructors and also the getter and setter methods. Because of my convention of using the leading M on the member variables, I've had to make some mild changes to the automated code that was generated. But here are the results, and this is a nice generic class that will allow us to hold a single text message. Looking back at our main activity class, we see the errors have disappeared, suggesting that we have declared and defined this new text message class correctly. We're going to switch now to laying out the screen for our app and when we get to the layout page which is the activity XML file you might find there's some errors here to get rid of them you should just either refresh the layout or build the app usually the errors will go away 
All right, we're going to get rid of this hello world, which we don't need. And you can also see these lines are coming up, suggesting that the default constraint view for Android Studio 2.2 is in effect. So we're going to switch this out to a layout, view, a relative layout view. And we're going to delete these constraints that only are needed in constraint view. Oops. And uh, we're not going to really need this uh, hello world, so we're going to get rid of that also. And getting back to the WYSIWYG view now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a spinner up here, which is the drop down menu. And then underneath that, we're going to put a list of all the text messages that we want to show. So let's start by finding a spinner. Here's a spinner right here, and I'm going to put that right up here. And then underneath that, let me change the name of the spinner. I'm going to call that, uh, let's call that auto reply spinner underscore SP. That way we'll know it's a spinner. Okay, and then underneath that, we'll put the, uh, the list of text messages that we want to show. Now, we haven't used a list view in the past, and this will be a good time to introduce that. So we're going to put that right underneath. And there is our list view. And we're going to call that, and we'll call it LV for list view. OK, and that's our nice, simple uh, layout. And later on in the enhancements, you'll be adding a button somewhere to this to make it, allow the user to add additional messages to the drop down menu. But we're not going to do that here in the basic app. Back in the main activity, we, we're now going to introduce some member variables and associate the member variables with their corresponding layout variables. OK, and now we're going to associate those variables with their layout counterparts. So to do that, we're going to create a new initialization method, as is our habit. project. I'm not going to go over it in detail because there have been previous tutorials on spinners. I've gone and used an array list instead of an array to make it easier for you when you do your enhancements to add to the list. And as an initial set of choices, we're going to say that the three reasons we cannot reply to the user's text are because we're either driving, sleeping, or eating. And right now I have it set to send a toast message based on what's picked. But eventually, we're going to turn this into a situation where if the text is received, we're going to send one of these replies back automatically to the user. It's time to test the app now. And we've got our emulator running. And the default is showing up as driving. But if we pick one of the other ones, you can see we get a toast message showing the one we picked. Notice that the list view is empty right now because we haven't loaded the text messages from the ones that we've gotten since the app has started. That's that we're going to do by building the receiver and that's the next part of the tutorial. 